Am I right, Connie, that you speak Bengali? Very badly, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to count us down in Bengali? Oh, yeah, I can cope with that. That's okay. Pas char din tui ak. So your parents came to the UK from Bangladesh. You were born here. Mm -hmm. What sort of impact on your life have your Bengali roots had? I think quite a lot, because you're kind of straddling two cultures. Um, my parents came over in the 60s, and then they had me and my sisters. But all the while, they had quite a lot of friends within the Bangladeshi community. And then... Also, my dad came over actually to um, be an actuary, so that's life insurance, but he ended up buying an Indian restaurant and most of the Indian restaurants in the UK are owned by Bangladeshis, so it's quite a Bangladeshi thing to do. And you've been to Bangladesh several times. Yeah. Yeah, I went when I was 14 with the whole family, which was a very uh, long trip. It's about a month or more even, the whole of the summer holidays. Um, and that was quite an eye-opener. Um, and I remember actually we came back and in, in the charts it was that song, Back to Life, Back to Reality. And it felt quite apt at the time. Um, and then I've been a few, few other times subsequently. You went with Blue Peter? Yes, we filmed there. We went back to my parents' home and then I went for BBC Lifeline. Um, and then I've been a couple of times at times on foreign office visits there as well. Has it been hard moving on from Blue Peter in the eyes of commissioners and the public? Yeah, I'd say so. I think the words Blue Peter, whether people have seen the show or seen me on the show, um, conjure up a lot of, sort of stereotypes and cliches. Um, and so there's a kind of discrimination, I think, against Blue Peter in some people's eyes. Have you enjoyed working in TV? Um, I really have, yeah. It's, it's been good fun. Have you ever thought, actually, I'm going to leave TV behind completely and do something totally different? I have sort of thought that, but then I love it so much that there seems little point. As long as the work is coming in, then I think I'll stick with it. And you're working on the extra factor? Yes. Does that help sort of break you away from Blue Peter? Yeah, definitely. I think until you do something big, you'll always be known as ex Blue Peter presenter because a lot of other shows are in small series here and there but they're not ongoing so they're not likely to call you I don't know Guinness World Records presenter or you know just other sort of bitty shows so because X Factor is so big now I can be tagged with that label so and have yeah. you had fun doing the extra factor yes it's been really, really good fun. You meet so many different characters. Um, you get to travel as well when you go and do the judges' houses. And you get to do live telly, which is what I absolutely love. Before we completely leave Blue Peter behind mm. us, you were the longest-serving female presenter on it. Time just flew like that. Before I'd known it, I was on it for 10 years, before I knew it, rather. And every time I was thinking of leaving, there was always some incentive to make me stay. So it's like, no, stay, because then you can beat Valerie Singleton's record. And stay, because then you could be here for the 4,000th program. And stay, because it's the 45th birthday. And, you know, whatever it was. And so after 10 years, I thought, look, I have to go now. Otherwise, I'll just be here forever. Do you I'll be in a Zimmer frame. Do you still use skills? that you picked up on Blue Peter? I can make pancakes very quickly and very easily without measuring anything. So that's a pretty Blue Peter-ish skill, I think. Now you went to Cambridge. Yes. And you studied economics. Tell me mm. about that. Um, I did science A-levels. So I did physics, chemistry, maths A-levels. And I've always gone through life not being sure what I wanted to do. So I've kept my options open. So I could still be, I don't know, a doctor or engineer, but I could still go into telly or do couldn't be a doctor if you did economics. You could be a doctor with my A-levels of physics, chemistry and maths. Okay. So you need to have sciences to be a doctor. And although biology is preferable, you can still do it with those A-levels. But I got to um, picking universities and courses. And I decided that actually I sort of didn't want to really go into sciences for a career. So it was just a case of having a degree. So I thought law or economics, because the A-levels were OK for that. And I chose economics. Do My sister did law. Do you still keep an eye on the world of economics and finance? Um, sort of with a healthy interest, but not with any sort of anarchy intent. Do you sort of understand the banking crisis? Um, the financial ish, crisis? Ish. Probably not all the finer details, but sort of a broad overview. Are you political? Um, I am interested in politics, 
but I don't want to be too political. I've sort of dabbled. Before. Have you got a life philosophy or a rule that you live by? Um, I guess live for the moment. There's this poem that says, yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery, today's a gift, the present. And that... <laughs> <laughs> Bang on. Is it? Lovely to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs>